The title today is Living as God Intended. Um, I'm, the course that I'm, I've been doing at a place called CWR, which is um, Christian World Revival, which um, you probably know better through um, the Bible reading notes, Every Day with Jesus. Um, it's the place that produces those. It's uh, where Selwyn Hughes um, was, um, and it, it's very much his ministry. And this is what this talk is based on. It's the, what underpins their work, really, there. Um, they call it Christ Empowered Living. And uh, I've got a book here on it. Um, and they also do a seminar based on it, which is coming up very soon. There's one on the 2nd of May. So if having this, listened to this morning, you think, oh, that's really interesting. I'd like some more of that. Um, there's some forms there if you want them um, to go and have a, a study day on a Wednesday at a beautiful house in Farnham um, and get spoiled and have a real little kind of retreat day. Um, it's a beautiful place. So that's what I'm basing it on, but we're calling it Living as God Intended. And the, the thing that it is based on is our deep needs. Um, we all have within us deep needs and deep longings. Um, and my question really, just to get us going at the beginning, was what are some of our deepest needs that we have, that we recognize within ourselves, in our lives where we live now? What do, our, what do we need um, if anybody has any ideas, Catherine said something to you. <laughs> Sleep, yeah, well, that's right, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially after having woken up an hour early um, this morning. Any, any other kind of needs that people can recognise? To be needed. To be needed, yeah, to be wanted by other people. Yeah, to be accepted. To be loved. To be loved, yeah. Security. Yeah, security, what kind of... Can you expand that? Maybe financial, maybe um, personal security. Yep, so financial security, personal security. Work, somewhere to live. Gosh, (laughs) Jenny is really pouring them out now. Health needs. Health needs, yeah, yeah. Physical wellness, yeah, yeah. So, Nigel's muttering. Relationships. Relationships, yeah, yeah. It's very important that we uh, have a people around us that we can, uh, that we can relate to. Um, let me just move that over there so that I can open that. Um, okay, so I have to go, I hope. Is that moved on? Yes, so the slide moves on. So um, this was just some of them that I came up with. Obviously, we've come up with similar things. So um, they split them up into three uh, categories there. So the first one is to be secure which um, it covers things like to be warm. We all need to be warm. We need to be fed, safe from danger. And then there's also there's the um, to be valued or to have self-worth. We need to um, feel that we're loved and cherished and accepted. Um, and then the, the last one is to be significant, to feel that we matter. It's really important to feel that we've got um, something to bring to the lives of other people, that, that we can um, feel that what we're doing is makes us significant. Um, But if we go back to the beginning, back to to the Bible and back to Adam and Eve and just think about them for a minute or two, um, they lived in the garden and they had a perfect existence. They had a perfect relationship with God and they had all that they needed in the garden. Um, They didn't actually long for anything because it was all provided for them. Um, what kind of things, you know, I've given you some there. Are there any other things from Adam and Eve in the garden that you can think that where they were having their needs met? Yeah, beautiful world. Yeah, beautiful. beautiful activity there with the animals. Yeah, so, yeah, okay, so they were living in a beautiful place and they had, they had yeah, um, purpose. They had an activity to do in naming the animals and, um, and caring for them. Um, they walked with God, didn't they? So they yeah. had closeness with God. They had a real closeness with God, yes. He came down every evening and walked with them in the garden. Um, okay, the next slide, I've given you there some clues that I just came up with. They were getting their security. Uh, they lived in a garden, they lived in a nice place, they had enough food to eat, it was warm, it was um, comfortable for them. They were... They were valued because God walked with them, as Malcolm said. Um, They enjoyed one another's company. 
and, they, and God was pleased with them. He, he was pleased with what he had created. And they were also significant. They had a meaning and a purpose to their life because they mattered to God and they ruled over the creatures and they cared for the garden. So they had a, had a purpose. So their deepest needs were being met by God in the garden and they had the perfect existence. Um, you said they had a freedom. But would we say they had a freedom? Um, yeah, but they didn't, they didn't need to look elsewhere, did they? I guess they had a freedom. Um, they, they certainly had freedom because they had a freedom of choice, didn't they? And they made that choice um, of, of eating the apple and, and, um, and doubting God. They chose all the names of the animals. It's quite yes. Yeah. 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 So that is um, Adam and Eve <laughs> in the garden. Um, Completely under God's love, they were receiving everything they, that they wanted from God. So they had their security, their self-worth or their value, um, and they were significant to him. And all was perfect. And we know that a three-legged stool is quite a strong base to, to be on. Um, you know, a three-legged stool is, through history has been a very strong base. Um, and so there they are, receiving all that they wanted. So... Um, but, of course, it doesn't stay like that, does it? And as Nigel said, they had some choice, and they made a choice, made a decision, um, having been tempted, which possibly wasn't a very good one. Um, and so, after that, everything was changed, and doubt entered their, uh, their minds. They doubted God, uh, they doubted the goodness of God, and they uh, were tempted to eat from the tree of life and gain what uh, God knew. They, they were tempted to doubt God in that, in so much as the, the, he, God had said to them, if you eat from the tree, you will die. And the devil says to them, well, surely you won't die if you eat from the tree. So their doubt had entered their, um, their lives straight away. And from then on, they determined to live their lives without depending on God. They didn't need him to meet their needs. They thought that they could deal with it themselves. So they started straight away to look for other things to meet some of their deepest needs. Um, in Genesis, it says that they became afraid of God straight away, and they hid. Um, they felt shame from one another and from God, and they made clothes for themselves. Um, and we also know that after that, God punished them. So uh, things were not quite as rosy as they had been. And we find that their security that they'd had was now replaced with insecurity and they had to hide from God, that their self-worth or their value was placed with inferiority and they had to clothe themselves and that their significance, who they were and what they were doing, um, they were now insignificant. God punished them and sent them out of the garden and they lost their role um, that, they'd, that they'd had. Um, and this is what we sadly inherit and I think we go on to that slide there, which is um, not quite so good. The stool is broken, and there's their three legs have been replaced with um, insecurity. And that's where, where, that's where we are, really. We are um, insecure in that we don't always... It's not that we don't love God enough, but that we don't always realise how much he loves us. And we can feel insecure. We can feel inferior. We start to value ourselves um, as we think others value us rather than getting our value from, from God. Um, I've got a little thing here which is quite complicated and I wished I'd done it as a slide, but it was too late to do it here. I am not who I think I am. I am not who you think I am but I am who I think you think I am. Um, that's how we live our lives, kind of trying to second guess what do you think and how do you think I am, and I'll try and be that person for you. Um, and we also have inherited insignificance. We lack, to a certain extent, meaning and purpose in our lives if we're not careful. Um, but we all have those same three deep needs and longings, and we have within us a desire to get back to that right place with God. Um, he places that within us, and we don't always recognize it, but it is within everybody, a desire to get back to that right relationship with God um, and to have our, 
uh, security, our value and, our, and some significance. Of course, when we're born as babies, we require our parents to provide that for us. But, you know, we need our parents to feed us and keep us warm. But as we grow into adults, we try to meet those ourselves, whereas really we need to recognise them as adults and, and recognise God. But God did create us to think and to use our minds. And there's just a couple of Bible verses just to remind us of the fact that when we were created, we were created as thinking beings. Um, and God doesn't mind us using our minds, but he wants us to use our minds correctly. So the first one is in Isaiah 55 which Ruth has got. Verse 8 and 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Thank you. Did you hear that? Did everybody hear that? Um, it's basically, that's the verse that you all probably know, but my thoughts are, are not your thoughts. So we have to acknowledge that God's given us thoughts, and then the next one is, uh, no, it's not Dawn. The next one is Jenny. It's 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Okay, so our minds have been led astray and we need to um, pull them back. And then Dawn brings us the good news of uh, how we can or, or how we should be. Yeah, this is Romans 12, verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so we, we see from those that our minds were changed, first of all, our minds were changed after the fall. Then we see from the Corinthians one that um, our minds have been led astray and we don't always uh, have our devotion to Christ in the same way. Um, and then Dawn tells us that we need to be renewed to have our minds changed. So we all long for our deep needs and longings which... God longs to meet for us, but instead of allowing God to, to meet our needs and longings for us, we, as foolish um, human beings, try to find other things or other people to meet those needs for us and put other things and other people above God. That isn't to say that we don't look to God to provide those for us, but we also look to other things and sometimes put those above our, our relationship or our dependency on God. So, we come to this verse, which is a key verse that underpins uh, a lot of their teaching, which you find in Jeremiah 2, verse 31. And it says this, My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. And I just... Oh, doesn't come up all that well there. It was the best picture I could find of a, a waterfall um, and somebody standing underneath it. And that's a lovely pictorial image for me of uh, what God's love and his grace and everything that he provides for us, that it just found, falls down and there's a man standing there with a hat on, for some reason, <laughs> um, becoming completely drenched in, in all the goodness that, that God has for us. But we step out from underneath that waterfall. We step out from underneath his goodness. And uh, that's the place where we should be, standing there under that. But instead of that, this is what we do. We dig cisterns. Now, cisterns, when the Bible were, was written, uh, were wells. And uh, that was the, the thing they were doing. They were digging wells. So instead of standing under that waterfall receiving water, they were digging holes to try and collect water. But the, but the cisterns were broken and they leaked. And they may fill up with water for a while, but the water drains away. And so you then have to go and dig another one. Um, and, and, and that is the analogy for what we do in our lives. Instead of standing under the waterfall, we dig holes for ourselves 
that satisfy us for a little while and make us happy, but they leak and we need to move away and, uh, and dig more. Um, and we go about looking for other things and other people to make us happy in our, in our, in our systems that we dig. So this is living as God intended. This is where we should be. We're over here. We're thinking beings. And we have our deep needs and longings, which we recognize. And we come over here under God's goodness and we allow him to provide for us. Um, But it's not the way it is all the time for us or the way it could be for all of us. Now, in, in the Bible, in, in Proverbs, we, the Bible mentions fools a lot. Um, and a fool is someone who thinks that he knows where life is to be found, but doesn't. And this is what we do. Instead of allowing our deepest needs and longings to be met with God, we set up for ourselves, it says chosen goals there, so we, we create goals for ourselves, things for ourselves that we think will make us happy. But sadly, this blue bar here that's blocking that are the things in life that actually stop us from reaching our chosen goals. If we could get to our goals, then we would make ourselves happy for a, for a while. But sadly, there's a lot of things that, that get in the way of that. So we have unsatisfied deep longings. We think we know better and can meet our deep thirsts outside of God. We have unnoticed wrong thinking. We try to drink from leaking wells. And we have unrecognized wrong goals that we choose to go after, things that we choose to make us happy. There's a big difference between what the world says is normal and acceptable, and actually what the scriptures teach us is good practice. Um, Even Christians, I put here, even Christians can put other things in place, um, either as equal to God or even above God, without realising it. Subconsciously, we, we can move into this situation. So, I just wanted us to think for a moment... Um, about where else we might look to have our deep longings met. What things may we have in our mind? What goals may we have that we think are going to make us happy? And I don't know whether, from what I've said so far, there's anything that you can start to recognise that may have become a well in your life that you're having to, to dig to try and meet your needs. So I'll give you a minute to think. These are the talk. This so this is the, the thing. The digging the system. Yes. <laughs> what we have done to where we may go to get our security and our, our happiness and to have our longings met. Money and savings and that kind of thing for Yeah, money and savings. Um, Margaret says, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we... we And we're never satisfied with what we've got in the bank, are we? Because we always think we might need a bit more. So there's that constant drive to earn money all the time. And so perhaps you then put your job as part of it, that constant desire for uh, getting more more money. We're praised from other people rather than love and acceptance from God. And then we're very dependent on whether people... Do praise us a lot. Yep, yep, yep. So praise, Dawn's saying, praise from other people. So it's, yeah, it's to do with who you are in the eyes of other people. Yeah, yeah. Which I think we're all guilty of. I certainly am. Anything else? I suppose wrong relationships as well. People are desperate to feel that someone cares about them. I'm scattered the throat. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Wrong, wrong relationships that we... Yes, you, you, you're in a mar- you get married because you, you feel unloved. Perhaps you've had a difficult childhood. I'll get married and have a partner. Maybe not even married these days, is it? Um, live with somebody and then that relationship goes wrong and then straight away they're diving into another relationship to try and get their love, to get their love met. Um, and it, it's, it's, yeah, you can see then, can't you? It, it works for a little while. You're happy for a bit and then... The, the system leaks and you've, you've moved on and you need another relationship to give you that. 
with all this sort of social media and um, video games and that, it's kind of, I don't know, I'm not very good at all that stuff, but it strikes me that kind of gives immediate um, gratification somehow. You know, you, somebody's going there, somebody's, you know, there's something else that you can watch or a game you can play or you can beat the score. It's kind of, yeah, it seems like, I mean, I'm not particularly very good at that kind of stuff, but yeah. I, mean, I can see that that can take over someone's life. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's quite what needed is. I should have given you the thing for that, so I'll just repeat that. So yeah, you're yeah, saying yeah. that you've got um, multimedia and games and things that you, gives you a, a kick, a, a sense of well-being, because you've, you've done something. Yeah. It can be a distraction, can't it, or a form of escapism, where you, you're filling your life with all sorts of stuff, so you don't have to think about those real values. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, they're just temporary. They just give you a short-term fix, but they make you feel good at the time. Yeah. There's alcohol. Hold on. And alcohol. Yeah, yeah. alcohol, yeah. That's a really good one because that's a real good one for saying that the system leaks because you drink, you get that high, you think it's good, and then, the then you get depressed the next morning and you need a bit more than the next night, and, and so it goes on that you think it's bringing you happiness but it's a very short term one celebrity status sorry, uh, sorry. celebrity status yeah shopping and getting things yeah oh yeah shopping and getting things yes that's a common one isn't it for people when they're feeling a bit low will think i'll go i'll go shopping <laughs> i'll go on a shopping trip um, yeah pornography pornography mm <laughs> Big one, yeah, yes, yeah, and it just leads on and on, doesn't it? It doesn't ever meet those needs properly, and so it just, just a, a downward spiral. You could liken the lottery to that as well. You could liken the lottery to that as well. Playing the lottery, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Is there, is there a sense? Shall I just? Yeah. The question I've got is that each of these things, in small doses, may not be a well. So I just wonder if there's anything you've got to say about that, Penny, just because it strikes me if you take everything we've just mentioned away, it would seem a little bit empty. Do you, does that make any sort of sense? Yeah. Um, so I don't know what they say about that or any thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, nothing, the, we can't say we can't have any of these things for, for our pleasure, but it's putting things above God. It's when they become more important to you than, than God, I would say, that there's nothing wrong with having them. There's nothing wrong with having relationships. Yeah. I mean, relationships is one, for, for, for example. I mean, God would say quite clearly that we should have a relationships. We should have a partner that we, we love, a husband or a wife that we love. But if we are then turning our husband or our wife, our relationship with them, into meeting all of our needs to be loved and valued... Then we've put then we've put them we've made them into <laughs> then we've made them into God because we're saying to them you know my life depends on how much love you give me and how much value you give me um, and we're not putting God so it's when you're putting something above God not having them in themselves is not a bad thing but it's when they become more than God then that that is the danger. So and what? Do they say why people do that? Do they say why people do that? You know, what causes people to do that? Because they've stepped out of that waterfall of God's love, and they're trying to. What causes them to step out? Well, we're born in it. Yeah, the sin, that, the, the fall caused us to. That was when you know the Adam and Eve had a perfect existence, and it was when they ate from that tree of life that the shame, the guilt, the, the, the problems came into their world. So why do it? That's she knew he wanted the apple. She knew he wanted the apple and she wanted to give him everything. Hold on, let me come here. Lynn's got a little gem for us. She knew that he wanted that apple and so she got it for him to please him, to buy him. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's our very nature, isn't it? We want to be under the waterfall. I want to be there, but I find just the way I am. I, without, look, without even thinking, I've moved away. Mm. It's 
But the horribly logical person that I am says, why? Because, you know, I, but I don't think like that. I think that's why I'm asking, because I think there's a certain, I think, might be wrong, but there's a certain type of mental way of thinking that might make you do that. But my brain would say, no, don't do that. And therefore I find it hard to understand. I wonder if it's a lack of trust. Like, I know I can easily, if I get this, I can definitely get that kick, but can I trust God? Will God definitely do that? You know, so it's a lack of trust, I suppose. Will God definitely fill my needs? Yeah. I don't know. And it isn't something that you, that you master. You know, oh, I've done it. Oh, I've got there. Oh, good. I'm because we just step out of it all the time. We, you know, I can realign myself back under that waterfall, and then a little while, if we go on a bit further, I'll start talking to you about negative emotions, and they are a warning to you that you've stepped out of from underneath. That you've got a goal. You've got a, You've set up your own goal that is that is wrong. Um, These things can be very appealing. Sorry, Dawn, saying that they're very appealing, these things, yeah. yeah. I remember um, <coughs> David White, who's the minister... Of oh, hold on, sorry. David White, who's the minister... <laughs> it's good fun, this, isn't it? Who's the minister at St Andrews, um, said that in his ministry, what he has to do, or what he finds is crucial for his ministry, is that he needs to remember that it's all about God. And one way he does that, which I know is not a luxury that everybody can do, <laughs> but he spends one day a week on his face before God saying, it's all about you. I, I want to know your love afresh. Um, and I want to hear what you want me to do in my life. And I think the, the issue for us is our lives get so busy and we're caught up in the systems of this world, which demand of us certain things, that often we, we feel quite distant from the love and power of God. And so when that happens, I guess we then say, well, okay, I've, I'm having a pretty miserable day, but at least I can have a bottle of wine this evening, or at least I can, um, I can look at my bank account and say it's okay, or at least um, I can look at some pornography. Or, do, do you know what I mean? So in a sense, if, we don't, if we're not actually living in the flow of God's love, knowing his presence with us, then there's other things which seem to take their place. Because um, we, we, we are needy people. We have those needs. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's very... But do you want to finish off? <laughs> Much better than me. <laughs> so, and I think following on from that as well, that I've got down here as one of my notes, is that it's hard work digging wells for ourselves. It's actually tiring. You know, we, we've got to keep on, whereas if we just remember to come back under the, the waterfall, it's much easier. Um, we just finished digging one well, we think we'll at last be happy, we realise it's leaking and we've got to go on and, and dig another one. I've, I've put here that we put ourselves and others under a great deal of pressure when we ask them to meet our needs, which we've talked about. And we anaesthetise the pain that we get from all this digging that we're doing. We can anaesthetise the pain with pornography and alcohol and drugs and shopping and uh, it's something to, to numb the pain. So we're turning, we're turning everyday things that we do and our, possibly our relationships as well quite unconsciously into uh, a sin and, um, and into an idol. And, of course, we go back to the Ten Commandments. We, you know, the, one of the Ten Commandments was that you will not have an idol above me. And so the important thing is to remember that it's, the things themselves are not bad, but it's when we're putting them above God, when we're giving them more importance than our relationship with God. So, I ask you to search yourselves deeply, regularly, um, almost on a daily basis, and to try and acknowledge within yourself whether there are idols that you have, whether you, there are other things or other people that you are relying on to meet needs that really we should be getting from standing under that waterfall of God's love and provision. And it's something we have to keep on doing. And I had to do it just preparing to do this. Made me really sit down and think, wow, have I? Am I still there, you know, for when I first discovered this? And I think regularly, weekly almost, I need to re-examine myself deeply. Um, do we worship created things rather than the creator himself? So it comes on to... How do we do it, which perhaps is where 
Ian was asking a little bit, how, do we, how can we make sure that we're back there? So the first and most important thing is that we do have a saviour. We have Jesus Christ. Um, he died for us and he died to make it right for us. He didn't die um, because God didn't send him down to, God didn't send Jesus to die to make us love God, but he sent him to die because he loves us. We get our love from him. Um, the other really important thing with that waterfall is that it's constant. It's not a shower head that you turn on and off. You know, that waterfall is flowing of God's love and provision. It's flowing all the time. We choose to step under it and we choose to step out of it. And any time we want to, we can step back under the, the waterfall and receive from God. His promises endure forever. In Malachi 3, um, there's a lovely verse which I love where it says, Return to me and I will return to you. You know, we only have to go and step back to God and rely on him. Um, and we find that he's there all the time. He's never gone. He's been there all the time. So there's a, there's a, um, a few steps that I recommend that you do. And I've got a little handout for you at the end, which I've put these steps on for you, um, for you to take away and reflect on at home in your quiet time. And the first one is to consider the situation. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you, to tell you, to point out to you areas of your life maybe where it's not quite lined up properly. And then with honesty and humility, just kind of accept the fact that things need to change and that your thinking and your, the way you live your days needs to change. And then repent. Admit to God that you are thinking wrongly and that you've got wrong dependence on things, that you've got some idols that you shouldn't have um, that are above him. Accept his forgiveness and then choose, really importantly, number five, is choose to go on trusting in God and not relying on your, on your whatever goals. So I've got those five points there for you to take away and hopefully to use and, and to reflect on. And I just thought at this point it might be good maybe if we just paused and I ask Malcolm just to say a prayer for us as we perhaps consider that and then I'll just go on to some other things. <coughs> Shall we pray? Yeah. Yes, we Thank you, Lord, for all that Penny's been learning and all that's revealed in your word. Uh, we, we do want to just say that, um, like Adam and Eve, we love the independent life. We like to get on with stuff, and so often we ignore you, forget you. And then, as we rush after this, that, and the other, we realize um, that we're feeling empty and the things which the world says will satisfy are not satisfying. And so, Lord, we pray, we pray that as we spend time alone with you, that you would just show us the areas of foolishness, the way we've stepped out from your waterfall of love. And I pray you'd give us faith and trust to step back, to, to turn away from patterns that are unhelpful in our lives and we each perhaps know some of them and perhaps we need your spirit to reveal others um, so that we can truly be the happiest people on earth, knowing full significance, self-esteem, self-worth in you. And thank you that you have provided everything. You've provided Jesus. You've provided your spirit. You've provided the body of Christ, your church. You've provided the beauty of creation all around us. You've provided everything. For us and help us to see your hand in it all and not imagine it's just our doing. So continue to teach us today. Renew our minds. Change our thinking so that we are aligned with your perfect will, both for this life and the life which is to come. Amen. Thank you. So this is our security, thinking about that three-legged stool again, our security. These are some of the things that 
God has provided for us through his creation. Um, food, water, oxygen, light, darkness, sleep. Somebody wanted sleep, didn't they? Um, safety. Um, and of course, the most important one is love. Um, and I've just put down here Psalm 23. It says, I shall not want, I shall fear no evil. Um, you know, we, we have it all provided there for us. Um, and then the, the good news of our value is not in what other people think of us or who we think we ought to be for everybody else, but our value is in Jesus. And those were just, oh, sorry, they didn't come up, that light print doesn't come out there very well, does it? But these are just some of the, those wonderful promises that we are children of God. So this is our value. It's not what my husband thinks of me or what my children think or what you think of me, but uh, we're children of God. We're created in his image. We're the apple of his eye. We are adopted into his family. We are part of his inheritance that Jesus paid that ultimate price for us, brought our freedom on the cross just because we're worth it, just because I'm worth it. He did it just for me. Um, even if everybody else is perfect, he would have done it just for me. Um, and that we are loved by him because of who we are, not because of what we do, because of who we are. And I just think... That's an awesome truth. So if nothing else, just remember that. Um, our value in Jesus. And then our significance. We are all significant. That lovely verse in the Bible that says that I, the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. He has a plan and a purpose for us. So we have a role to play. Even if we don't recognize it now, we, he has a role for us to play. And in his eyes, we are significant. Even if we feel worthless from what the world tells us. Um, he calls everybody. He's got service that he calls everybody to do. Uh, we can all love our neighbour, and that gives us significance in God's eyes. We can spread his word if we have the confidence to. We can tell other people. Um, we can love justice. We can hate injustice. We can be a light to all people. We can recognise the gifts that he gives us because God gifts everybody in a different way to, to do things. We can all show kindness um, and we can all care for the poor and the oppressed in some way, even if it's only a very small way, but it gives us significance in God's eyes. So, as we, so his love flows right out of us to others um, when we realise how significant we are. We stop digging wells and we just stand um, and receive from him. We start living the lives that God intended us to live being loved unconditionally by him, knowing the ultimate value that we are to him because he sent Jesus. How can we share that? Penny? Pardon? How can we share that to other people? What you're saying now, how can we Tell them. encourage one another? How can we encourage one another? Yeah. Telling them, I guess. Telling them all those truths. So that, yes, that, <laughs> that they're... That they're um, they're valued, that God loves them, that Jesus loves them, that it uh, is, yeah, but I guess that's the main thing. I mean, obviously, if you want to find out more about this whole no, thing, no, then I'm go just, and... Just like to hear it from yes. A lot of it's there, isn't it? I yeah, think. exactly, yeah. It is, it is, it's quite interesting, it's flowing, isn't it? So it flows into us and flows out. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I'm sorry, I should have said that. It's flowing, Malcolm's saying. It flows into us and, and out of us, yeah. And, sorry. I think sometimes, sometimes we, get, you know, we get caught up with all the mundane things and we think, well, I can't do all these things, but somehow we need to find God and find his love in the mundane things and see him in those things. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that brings you your significance. Yeah, but what right. Nigel's saying is how we're, how we're passing that on to other people. But I guess it's to say to other people, you know, I'm doing this because God loves me. Uh, you know, it's, it's, that's where I'm getting I it. I don't think you need to do too much. I think if you let his light shine in you, then that will flow out to others, just your own life. Yeah, yeah. If it's walking with God. Yes, yeah. Yes, it's kind of, it's a natural it's thing, isn't it? It's a natural you progression. You do something. Yes. Something yeah. And I think in some, when you walk with God, it's almost the reverse. Yes. Yeah. As long as you're walking with Him. Yeah. His light will shine through. Yes. So His light shines through you. And yes. In this, when you go away from what 
those points that you mentioned you earlier on. You shouldn't I? you were going to say so much. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's read old Japan, Penny. <laughs> well done. Lynn's got something. I think it's also practicing getting discernment on what other people are thinking and needing at that time and at the right time. I mean, there, there's a time for everything, a time to be born, a time to die. And it's so necessary, if you can, use the Lord to show you what the time is now for that particular person. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And the time is important, because sometimes you, you may have a plan for the future, maybe 10, 15, 20 years' time. And, of course, when that time comes, it's not what you wanted. Because at the time you wanted it, but you had to think about it and plan it ahead. Mm. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So. I have to let go. Let Jesus. Yeah. I've got to let go. Let go. And let, let Jesus. Go. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. Yes. Stop trying to be in control of it yourself, but trust in God. Um, that's what I put here, actually. My last point there on that was it's about trust. It's about having Jesus as our center, not as an optional extra. You know, he, he has to be the center. So um, just, I'll just go very, very, very quickly just to give you a flavor of what you could go on to. Or maybe if I get an opportunity, we can look at these um, deeper. But, so we start getting problems in our personality we, um, when we're starting to look for other relationships or other people or other things to meet our deep needs and longings. And this is where we start to get into you know, the psychological problems that we develop in life. Um, so we go back to this slide here with our chosen goals um, and it's this thing here that, that blocks our goals that causes problems within our personality to um, arise and that's especially for Kerry here because um, I have got a picture of a car dashboard here with uh, warning lights coming up on the screen um, and the thing that, re that is very important is that when you have a negative emotion something within you, uh, negative emotions are things like anger, um, guilt and shame, anxiety, fear, things like that. Whenever I have a negative emotion, I think to myself it's a warning signal that something is wrong in my thinking and it's a warning sign from God to say to me, hold on a minute, why are you thinking, like, why are you feeling like this, what is your goal what are you trying to set for yourself to make you happy that you can't reach? Um, and so ne they're warning signs from God, negative emotions. We feel them for a purpose. It's to remind us that we need to change our thinking. Um, so guilt and shame are one type of um, emotion that we can suffer from on that kind of spectrum. And usually it's when we have set a goal for ourselves which is unreachable, when we've decided that there is some, and I'll, go, I'll give you an example for these um, in a minute, but that is their guilt and shame from an unreachable goal. So we've set ourselves a goal which is something that it's impossible to get to and so we feel guilty that we're never going to um, get to it. Then there's anxiety and fear which is when a goal that we've set is uncertain when we don't really know whether we've <coughs> ever got there. Um, and the last one is anger and resentment and all those things on that spectrum of frustration and things and that's when a goal is blocked that's a um an, always an easier one for me to work out because it's things like if you um have want to get somewhere on time and you, there's a traffic jam you get are angry because your goal was to always appear to be on time or to be punctual um, something's got in the way, so you're angry because you can no longer be on time. Um, the other two I always find more difficult to find an example of, um, but I did think of one this morning, actually, when I was driving to take Johnny to choir practice at 8 o'clock this morning, <laughs> and I was thinking, now, what example can I give to the other ones? And I thought, anxiety, when do I feel anxious? And I thought, actually, I'm feeling anxious about this morning, you know, I'm feeling anxious about coming here and doing this. And I thought, well, okay, so what's my goal then? What's your goal? And so the goal that I think I had set up for myself was that I wanted to come here and deliver a talk to you for half an hour, 40 minutes, whatever, without having to refer to notes. And I wanted you all to think well of me. 
and I wanted to, you all to go away thinking, oh, she's wrong. So, <laughs> so that, was my, that was my goal. Um, and, of course, it was making me feel anxious and, uh, you know, and a little bit uncomfortable. And probably at the end of the morning I will go away and think, well, oh, I didn't really do that very well, did I? And, and there's my shame coming in because I haven't done it as well as I wanted to. Um, so uh, what's my, um, my so, there, so there's my shame and my anxiety coming in from the, this goal that I've set to produce this well. So then I think to myself, no, okay, I, that is not a good goal to have. Uh, I'm never going to stand and speak without notes. So if I set myself a goal that's more reachable, um, I have notes. And so I can stand here and use notes. So I've, I, my goal is, that is now no longer um, completely unrealistic. I've got notes and I'm going to use them. And I'm not going to care about what you lot think of me. All I'm going to care about is the fact that God has told me to come and bring this to you this morning. And that my value is in being obedient to God, not in what you think of me. But it's very easy... You, do, you can see, I hope, it's very easy to get my value from the feedback that you may or may not give me, whereas really I need to say, it doesn't matter what they think of me. I've got notes, so it's now achievable, and I don't care what you think, because all that matters is the fact that I've done what God wanted me to do. So when you have a warning sign of a negative emotion, go back and question your goal. Another really, another really um, easy one is with, as a parent, when, um, or, or maybe as a, as, a, as a wife, that you want to put all your value, get, get all your value from your husband and all the love from him. Um, you, you, you put that relationship onto such an uneven footing. And what you're trying to say is, that I want to be a perfect wife and I want you to be the perfect husband. Well, that's never going to happen. I'm never going to be the perfect wife. So don't expect all that, the love to come from him. Maybe as a parent, I want to be the perfect parent. I want to raise perfect children. I want to never lose my temper can be your goal. And of course, when you do... Oh, that's it. I'm useless. Absolutely, I've blown. You know. So you've. So, I hope that anyway. There's a lot more that we could talk about on that. So, do you want to say something, Stuart? Well, it's out to try that. It's, oh, sorry. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so we'll just finish. I just want to finish with um, a, a blessing for you. Um, but I want you to hear it slightly differently. So this is a blessing that you will um, all know, the Aaron blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. But I want you to look at that in value of your security, your value and your significance. Um, because I think that this verse or these verses can bring that to you. So I just invite you to close your eyes and I'm just going to read that to you and I just want you to receive it. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord does keep you. He keeps you safe. He sustains you in all things. He looks out for you. He is on your side. He is your security. The Lord makes his face shine on you and be gracious to you. He gives you your value because you are his and he delights in who you are. His face shines with his glory and you reflect that glory as he shines on you. He smiles on you. There is no dispute over your value or your worth. You are his. And you are infinitely valuable to him. And the Lord turns his face towards you. That is your significance. He turns his face to you because you matter. Because you are the centre of his attention. You are important in everything that you do. And lastly, he gives you his peace. That priceless shalom peace of God. The peace that passes all understanding, where all strivings 
and digging of wells cease. And we can rest in him, knowing that we are loved, valued, and important to the Lord Almighty, the creator of all things, the Father of the heavens. Amen.